How are we going everyone? Out the front here at Coburg. The raised planter boxes, as you can see, they've gone nuts. Our broccoli's nearly ready to harvest. Our, <laughs> our kale, I was gonna call it kale, but it's cauliflower. Oh bugger, there's grubs on this. And there's eggs everywhere, look at that. Just laying everywhere. Been eaten, to, been eaten alive. The heads are in here. Let me show you. Oh, there it is. Okay, cauliflower head forming. Better late than never. Look, I'm not worried about the leaves about being eaten because I don't use any chemicals. This one, actually, I should worry about it because it's almost been destroyed. Anyway, we're here to replace some of these because the kale's bolted. We've done its time. Normally, I cut this to the ground, but I want to replant in here. Where's my trail? Let me get my trail. Here it is. So I'm going to pull these ones out. I'm not going to leave the root system in because the kale will grow again. Look at this. It's a tiny root ball, actually. Look at that. Tiny as. Not a bad plan. Anyway, we can harvest that nice and clean. No white fly. No bugs, no grubs, no nothing. So we'll put that aside. So we're pulling out the kale today. Going to pull out the uh, beetroot as well. And we're going to replace it all. So we've got a couple of beetroots here. Ugh. All the tools in my hands at the same time. Is that how you guys garden? Do you use little garden belts, you know, tool belts? Shake that off. We want to use the leaves as well. Not a bad size for beetroot, considering it's only been, what, two and a half months or something like that since we put them in? So take that one out. We'll take this one out as well. I've actually planted already. Have a look at this corner here. This is from Renaissance, the Blue Hubbard, if I pronounce that correctly. I haven't grown one of these before. It's a big, a big unusual sort of a pointy head like a pear-shaped pumpkin. So that's in there at the moment. Now, when it comes to replanting, most times you can replenish your soil if you need to. What happens is after the garden season or the growing season, the soil's been um, depleted of the nutrients that it needs, so you wouldn't be planting the same beetroot. So the beetroot, whatever nutrients it takes up the season before, there'll be less of that available the next season. So you would recompost it, add your compost, add your superfood and your black reed, and that way you've basically replenished the soil. And here, in fact, just putting the stuff aside and pulling the weeds out at the same time. Here, what's that growing? That's a weed. We've actually dropped a fair bit as well. So I should top all this up, but I'm not going to do the entire bed because we don't have the room to actually top up the whole area. And what I mean by that is if I fill all this up, I'll end up covering up the silver bead. So what I'm going to do is just add a small amount of extra planting mix in this area here. But that's what I've done. For those who haven't seen these planter boxes before, um, what I've done here is I've got straw at the base, then I've added cocoa, compost and our planting mix on top. We've got a bit of an audience going over there. Say hello to the people. How are we going everybody? <laughs> All right, so that's how I've done it over here. And it's worked a treat. I don't want to take these ones out. Well, actually I should. No, I'm not going to let take this one out. I'll let this one come to flower a little bit more. But we are going to take these little beauties out. This one's for you. Come here, come here, come here. Don't be scared, don't be scared. Don't be scared, it's okay. Yeah, they don't bite. Oh, we got a little bit scared there, folks. <gasps> Look at that, we got a bigger one. Snail bait, eradicate eco. Tell me how on earth do these creatures appear in my raised garden bed? Where on earth do they come from? Munro Street, Coburg. Hopefully the birds get in before the cars do. How many more snails have we got here? Here's another one. Look at this, another one. Over the fence it goes. Another one. Bugger me. I come here once a week and I don't do any gardening. Too busy talking to people. Anyway, clean all these off. Time to pull them all out. And we're gonna transplant, what have we got? We've got a Caroline Reaper, we've got a Sweet Mix, we've got a Mama there. So we're doing capsicums today. Oh, and a blackjack zucchini. Nice little microclimax. This is going to love it. This will grow like there's no tomorrow. So we'll stick this in one corner. 
maybe in this corner here, and we'll put some Caroline Reaper over there and a sweet mama. Let's do it. Yeah. We've got some volunteers. Now, what I'm talking about here is companion planting and stagnating your planting cycle so you don't plant everything at once. We planted this tomato about four weeks ago and it's already taken off like a beauty. Got plenty of flowers on there, but also we planted some capsicum on either side. This is the south side of it. What have we got here? We've got a courtyard capsicum. It's already doubling and tripling in size, putting on some flowers. And on the north side here, which I should remove some of the broccoli leaves and enjoy them, because they're delicious. Folks, you know how important it is to grow your own so you can appreciate the quality and the flavours and the nutritional benefits that come out of homegrown produce because you ain't getting that at your supermarket. And if you think I'm kidding, do some research and you'll see yourself the amount of chemicals that are being used in our food today that comes on the shelf unpackaged, unlabeled, no instructions, no background, no nothing. You just, because you see the colours, you think it's all fresh and organic and clean. Bananas, even those aren't clean. Have a look at this capsicum, by the way. Pimiento, pimiento, if I can pronounce it correctly. Doing wonderfully well. Nice and green, because that's our planting mix. It's organic. It's full of the organic matter that we talk about, folks, and I'm talking about our planting mix. It's a clean process that we go through, and look, it includes Cocoa pith, cow manure, compost, worm castings, black grid, superfood, or activated charcoal, and rice hull. Now, there are a lot of great planting mediums out there. I call it a planting medium because it's ideal for raised beds, garden beds, and for smaller pots, add a little bit of extra cocoa pith into it just to give it a bit more porosity, a little bit lighter in drainage. That's all you need. The tiniest of seedlings may struggle in it because it is a heavy mix but it's an ideal mix. And this is the example of everything growing in here. And that's the planting mix, folks. Look, there are a lot of great products out there in the market, in the garden centers that you can get from some reputable manufacturers. At the end of the day, it's all in the trial. You need to be able to see the product being used. You've got to trial it yourself. If you haven't done so, pick your favorite company that you trust and think they're trustworthy and, and honest, because that's what it lies down to. Because if you haven't tried it, you've got to believe in what they say and what they promote on their product. Our bags are clean skin. They've only got the letter P to tell you it's a planting mix because we're not here for the amazing labelling and I'll tell you all about it. You can get the information on our website as far as what's in here. But it's all about the experience and this is what we're doing here. These are our trials, as you know, are doing Coburg and in Lethbridge at our home to see how our plants perform. And what I'm doing here is just top dressing the garden bed with some more planting mix because it's got everything and I haven't dug the base over, left it alone. So the microbes are still active as they were before we dug out. And all we need to do is add our next batch of plants. And I'll tell you something, I can't wait for this year's harvest. You know, now that I've got the two microclimates going, Lethbridge, which is radically cold and hot all in the same day, and Coburg here, which is a nice stabilized area, I'm bound to be harvesting like I have already. My leafy greens are doing well. Let's see how our summer crop goes. We've got a Carolina Reaper here. My mate Clive and Di for Renaissance Herbs. Planting all these chilies. I'm gonna do all these crazy chilies this year. So Carolina Reaper, we've got a giant bullhorn and a banana supreme. So where are we gonna put that? Okay. Oh, and a big malak has got to go in. How can I forget that one here? We're gonna stick it in here next week. I'm leaving a little bit of space in here in the middle. That's where the big malak is going. So we've got a uh, pumpkin here. Let's put the, uh, now we'll put the Caroline Reaper here and we'll put the giant bullhorn there. Here we're putting a zucchini blackjack. God help us. That's gonna to grow too big, isn't it? I'm gonna run out of space. It's just gonna push its way through. I'm gonna stick it in this corner here and then I'm trying to get it to grow over the side here like that. So we'll have to put the Banana Supreme somewhere else. We got any space over here? Three beds aren't enough for me. Bugger. You know what, right in between here. Because once we remove these two kale plants, once they come out, the Banana Supreme will take off and then later on we'll stick another plant in this corner here. That's it, need tools. Just loosening up the soil where it's going in there, I'm not mixing it up everywhere. Let's have a look at the root ball on this. Just starting to come through, so plenty of time for this to grow in the same pot. But we're just gonna pop it straight in here. 
like that. And a light press, not too hard. Make sure you put the label on so you remember how hot this one is. Otherwise, forever hold your peace. Hello, I'm the Sully. Miss Ali. Manisha. We've got two plants in here, folks. I don't want two zucchinis in the one spot, do I? Let's see if I can separate them without destroying it. Yeah, they're coming apart. They're so delicate, these things. All right, so we've got one here. Where's my trowel? I left it over there. Excuse me. I haven't put any herbs in this garden bed or flowers as yet. And I'm, I might dot it around later on for a few marigolds because they're a great deterrent for white fly and things like that, as are nasturtiums. But we've got no more snails in here, thank God for that. So I've got rid of all of them. So a few marigolds, a couple of nasturtiums will be lovely to go. So one zucchini in this corner. You know what, I might stick it over there. We've got, have a look at these plugs. These are our plugs. These are our plug tomato as well. So obviously different variety to the other one. From memory, I think that's a trust tomato. I might be wrong, I can't remember, I didn't label it. My bad. And then we've also got a burpless and a Lebanese cucumber there. And I've got a zucchini plant in my hands. Where would you put it? Where would you put it? We've got a lot of spring onions. We've harvested these once. Should I? Yeah, time to come out. Make room for them. We'll stick it in here. So this will grow its space in here. The cucumber will trail over the top, maybe over the zucchini, because it's not a climbing plant, the zucchini, more of a clumping, like that there. And then later on, we'll probably end up taking out the rest of the spring onions and replanting them. They haven't gone to waste, by no stretch of the imagination. Come along. Look, look, little spot here. We we'll just stick it in here, and they're happy again. Waste not, want not. And the last one is our Banana Supreme Capsicum, which is a beautiful long yellow variety that I've planted in between the kale. And we'll give it more sunlight as the kale is harvested. Folks, time to plant your seedlings. Get your veggies in for your spring, summer. Get your flowering plants as well. Companion planting is a must. Avoid turning your soil over as much as possible. And apologies to everybody who can't get our planting mix. And I know many of you in other states of Australia are wanting it. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to start shipping it out into state for everybody to be able to enjoy the same great benefits as we are enjoying here. But for those who can get out here, come to Coburg or come to Lethbridge and order your planting mix. Top dress your garden beds because you're not going to get a better result with anything else that I've seen so far out there in the industry. A lot of great products out there, don't get me wrong. A lot of them do a great job as well, but sometimes they need a little bit of extra helping hand, whereas this is a plant and forget scenario. So planting mix available, superfood, black green, everything's discounted so you can get your garden thriving with no much overlay, not a big overlay. VasilisGarden.com, everything you need, and the garden centre from Wednesday till Sundays. Pop down and say hello and enjoy your planting. From me, Vasily, Maresi.